joints on the left. Live in the hands, but I still get a spread. Something for the live, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson. I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Farmer never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the doubt. All right, right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. The market was absolutely crazy today, and we have a lot to talk about. But before we get into anything of what happened, we got to talk about what the big banks are saying and why we had this question today. I'm telling you, everybody was asking, is this a bear market rally or is this a bull trap? Literally, Wall Street seems to be divided. It is either this is the bottom or we are going to get fake now and go a lot lower. So let me share with you this idea. Is the S&P going to go up 45%? Personally, I don't know, but this guy right here, what's his name? Stoltfus. He is the head of investments at Oppenheimer, and today he reaffirmed his target on the S&P to 533, 5,330, which would imply a 40% move. And he says, if you compare it to like 2008, uh, from the end of 2008 to March 2009, he says some things look a little bit better. So that's the first one. But then this morning, we got to hear from from Goldman Sachs and uh, Morgan Stanley as well. And here is Morgan Stanley. They are saying that if we are going to get a recession, none of it is priced in and the market would have to go to 3000 So literally, we had a bunch of opposing opinions today. But if you didn't notice, today was a bullish day and people are optimistic. Does it mean that all the pain has gone away? No, but what even Stoltfist said himself, it looks like we are heading in the right direction. So we got a lot to talk about. I'm going to go over what happened. We're going to go over what we got tomorrow with Powell. And then I got a couple of plays. We actually made quite a few. And we're going to get a little bit of an update here on the bank stock. So drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. But here's the best part. We're going to be live this week on this channel. You don't need to go to a new channel. It's going to be right here. So if you're confused, where's my membership badge? What ended up happening? I can't find the stream. It's going to be on here for seven days. We had a little bit of issues. You can follow me on Twitter, Real Colt News. And even if you go there, the first person I retweeted, Troy, you can follow his account for Real Fast Stock News. It's amazing. So God bless all of you, but we'll see you here today on stream. And big shout out to the people we saw here today. Also, the Twitch as well. And... I don't know. Do you like the view? I was put. I think there's money on the table today, and I had this on my table, so I thought I put it. And I kind of like the juxtaposition that is given here. The video of it. I don't know. I can put it back on me, right? You see me now? Yeah. There you go. Now it's clear. Now I can see clear. Okay. Anyways, but let's talk now. What happened today? The market literally finished up 2.5 uh, across the board. Nasdaq and uh, Spy closed around the same points. At one point, we were up four percent today. But what happened? Why did we get? what we got today here are the keys it's very simple today was a lot more movement than news so even though we moved a lot and everybody was asking like what happened today josh the point was we were closed yesterday and a lot happened in the last two days we're kind of picking up and everything was chill again one big thing over the weekend we brought this up yesterday but biden he said that a recession isn't inevitable and a lot of people ended up liking that comment that was part of the bullishness the dollar was chilling out and went down even though the Japanese yen hit another low and we're going to talk about that but then there was that oil didn't go up or down too much and then every other country China Japan Australia anybody you could think of there was just a lot of chill especially after this big drop and then you had banks today dis de debating really are we going to get a recession is it going to happen in 2022 is it going to happen in 2023 and then some people were saying you know Things are looking good, and actually, we might be headed in the right direction. So, point was, there was just a lot of things that chilled out. We didn't get any more developments that were negative. None of the Fed speakers today were shocking anything. And like we said, a lot of the market and participants, they are going to start getting ready for Powell tomorrow. And just by nature, the dollar not moving, like we said over the weekend, that has been a very, very big key. So, that was the first part. That's what described today. That's why we got to see there was real estate data, but it came in low 
lower than expected, uh, which was good. So we're going to see how it plays out. But now coming into tomorrow, this is the real key. You're getting Powell tomorrow morning, literally right at the market opens. And this is now one of those congressional speeches. And like we said, this shouldn't really move the market. I, I would not be surprised if by the end of Powell's speech, we kind of trade like today, assuming there's no other developments. But what I'm trying to tell you, most of it is pre-written statements. This is something they do every uh, six months. They go and they bring Powell or even bring Yellen and they'll grill him and all of that. But usually nothing comes about it. Why it's so important? We got to watch for a bombshell. Pretty much Powell has done this in 2018. He did it once at the beginning of this year to announce the balance sheet reduction. If we get anything new that wasn't mentioned and it's like actually big and newly hawkish or newly dovish, that would be the only thing that's going to move the market. So we're going to listen to it. We're probably listen to it for a little bit. We'll hear it at open and all of that, but I'm probably not going to watch it all day. Uh, and just to tell you, unless there's a bombshell, it should be a non-event, but all eyes will be on Powell tomorrow. So keep your eyes out for that. But there is that in the final key. This relates into what we saw right now. Just watch for the dollar to play catch up this week because clearly something's wrong today. So again, people feel good. People feel optimistic. We're going on the heels of Powell. And again, take a look at the daily. Uh, watch for this level of like 379 once we get at that level and if we rally above that's going to give you an idea of how the market feels but that's where we closed out the Fed day. And you can see here now, since the Fed day, today is the first day we've even gotten back to any levels from that meeting. So we're going to see what happens. It is very important. But now in the midst of today and what you saw, other countries doing good, all of that, the bonds kept going lower. The dollar declined, which was good. But the dollar was still down, even though the Japanese yen weakened uh, to another 28-year low right now. And again, like we were saying, if that keeps going, that is not a good look as far as uh, where global inflation is going and it makes it a lot harder for everybody to watch and again we could connect it to China and all that we're not getting there just yet but the point I'm trying to say today was very confusing the dollar really shouldn't have been down like that with the yen being down that much but that kind of balanced down and even though the dollar was down and the market was up three percent the bonds still dropped and they're hovering near the highs right there that also isn't good so what I'm saying here as we get the data again University of Michigan consumer sentiment that will be key in any other real estate data this week and then whatever Powell and everybody else says but just watch out for the dollar to play catch up and see if that starts messing with oil again or if we see kind of the dollar start to act like the VIX but that was definitely the most important thing that we got out of today especially with kind of a chill return from the holiday type of day so there was that but let us get into the plays. So I'm actually really excited for these plays. I made uh, three different plays. I'm going to share two of them that I made. Uh, one of the plays that I made today that's not on this list. It was DeVita, DVA. They got a Supreme Court work ruling. I went with like a $30 like June or July option. Went up almost like 100%, but nothing too crazy. If that does develop, I'd watch out for them. But now coming into the rest of the week, especially with what we saw today, my first play is going to be XLU. So if you remember... I brought this up last week on the watch list and we were talking about, okay, if we get any sort of mini rotation, if defensives kind of come back, remember the last couple weeks, it has all been discretionaries popping back after that little fear fiasco with Walmart and Target. So people were kind of liking the discretionaries, but if we get more, you know, move back into value and dividends, especially with X dividends coming up in the next week or two, I was like, you know, maybe we get some defensives out of utilities and inflation hedge from there. So I thought it'd be good. It was moving up today and the premiums were absolutely, they were they were just beautiful. It was exactly what I wanted. So you could see a couple things here when I show you the chart. There's a couple of good and bad things going on. The first thing I don't like about it is that it's July 15th. I pretty much, I went with the July 15th $70 calls. I grabbed three of them for 19 cents a pop. Pretty much went 50% by the end of the day. Again, different spread there, at least 30%. But like I said, the thing I'm not liking about this, it does doesn't have much time. The thing I do like about it, look how cheap it is overall. Just, uh, I think, what, last Tuesday, this same option was going for 70 cents, $200 a couple of days before that. So again, with a lot less time, it means something different, but this play was up a lot. Remember, utilities got absolutely smashed. So that's the thing I'm not liking about it. But now let's go to the daily chart and I'm going to show you the real thing. When I grabbed it this morning at 19 cents, you can see it was a little cheaper, but most of the day, the 
first couple of trades in the morning, they were actually going for 30 cents. So even though the stock was up on the day and it was hitting an all-time high, when I bought the trade, it was actually cheaper than what the options were going for that day. Had a lot of discount. It's related to the safe havens and energy a little bit. I was like, hey, let me take this. I like it. So I might grab more of it. These are kind of the plays I've been liking recently. Obviously, we don't know if that rotation value in the utilities will hold, but if it does, I think this could be a really good play, and that is the first one I went with, so watch out for that. The second one, City and Morgan Stanley. So we talked about this yesterday for the bank stress test. That is going to happen on Thursday, but now City and Morgan Stanley, these are the ones that I think are going to win. So let's start with City first. Uh, honestly, this one should be a loser. So even though I'm grabbing it as one of my winners, uh, I'm here to tell you that they're actually not really expected to do good. Why do I want it? Warren Buffett just bought it recently, and I think maybe he knows something, but two, they've been doing good. If there's anybody with value or would benefit, uh, let's, I don't know the word, maybe disproportionately to anybody, any of the other banks, it would be City because I believe they are still restricted on their buybacks, dividends, and some of the other stuff. But pretty much, if what should be the loser ends up benefiting from the stress test and the Fed weakens some of their re restrictions, that could end up being very, very good. So I like them. So they should be a loser. We'll see what happens as far as the play. I grabbed two of the July 15th. Again, these only have like two or three weeks of time left. I got the 52 and a half calls. I grabbed two of them, 42 cents a pop didn't really move much on the day $80 total but that's the first one and then now coming into Morgan Stanley I just really like them and they've been solid over the last 12 months and even over the last six months they've been one of the better banks they've had better earnings haven't really scared uh as as some of the other ones so that's why I like them I went with the July 15th I believe a $80 call yeah I grabbed them in the morning for $1.22 now they're going for 94 cents so those drop 20 percent from the morning so we'll see what's gonna happen but those are my winners. If we get another green day with the bank stocks because they all opened up green today, I'm definitely going to find one on the put side and I'm probably going to aim for Wells Fargo. So we'll watch what happens. But again, that is a catalyst that will be coming out here on Thursday. And then finally, this one's a little bit weird. Neutrala, uh, Nutella and Regeneron, R-E-G-N. These are biotech. So why I'm going after it, there is a data release on June 24th, I believe for Neutrala, but I do believe it's connected to something with Regen. So that showed up on the Catalyst calendar. I thought it could be good. So we've seen Neutrala move big in the past around November. Kind of came down here in Regeneron in general. They've been doing good uh, just over the last year or so. So depending on how this plays out, since most of the two plays here so far are kind of a uh, Catalyst market related, this one is kind of uh, in a league of its own. I like what Mr. Mosby said in the chat today, baby. God bless the chat. He said he sees a lot of runway for bio stocks, and I could definitely agree with that, especially how they've been be in and we just know a good catalyst can keep these things moving so I really like that and we'll see what happens but those are the main plays as far as anything else I uh, didn't make any other trade that yen short that one's coming back we compared the FXY and YCS options and pretty much now's not the time to buy them on the next drop if you do want to play the yen I'm assuming the premiums will get absolutely whacked and that'll be your moment but be careful I had to close out of my end phase shares ended up losing I think like $2,700 total between the insurance and the loss on the share so that one wasn't pretty but got out of that place still holding the Costco because remember I got to roll over on any of those that I'm holding the shares with but those were the only other plays like I said following these ones tomorrow going to be watching the global currencies seeing what signals we have with the dollar and even bonds today again how weird the bonds were remember I said last week I'm going to be watching out for TLT today after that bond gap down it really messed up the option so we will see what happens but keep your eye on the broader stuff watch Watch for the catalyst, watch for the data, and before you know it, this week ends, and really, earnings in Powell is right around the corner already again! So I hope you're ready, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember, baby. Focus on the high. You see this? Lower quality, but I need higher quality. Oh, they don't feel me, Chad. Let's go. Let's just, just listen to the Aristotle. Love the wisdom. Be in the game. Stay focused. And we got a couple more months, baby. I'm locked and loaded. I hope you are ready and drink that water. Go to the gym and Chad. I love you. And just God bless those people supporting and holding it down. I'm going to see you very soon in the morning on this channel. God bless you. Okay, good night. Goodbye. Bye. All right, love you.